Townsend, pastor of Concord Baptist Church, and let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. I believe I asked you for something, Megan. Grace Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us all home safely today and watching over us. And Lord, uh, we thank you for watching over Kim and Dylan and Derek. Lord, I pray for Derek's speedy recovery and his brother Dylan, Lord, from that serious accident. And Lord, pray for his, his mom and her fractured wrist. And Lord, just thank you that they're all alive. And Lord, it could have turned out so different for these young people children and lord i pray you get him healed up and get him coming back and uh lord pray for brother Raj tonight and my friend danny mallory and rush limbaugh president trump lord this country lord all our preacher friends my brothers and sisters their husbands wives and companions lord pray for their souls those that are lost I pray you help and encourage those that are saved Lord, pray for all the folks in church and, and uh, their special needs. And Lord, uh, you watching over them, and giving them safety. And uh, my children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, uh, aunts and uncles, Lord. Uh, too numerous to name, but Lord, you know their names. I just pray you help them. Thank you for my wife feeling a, a lot better, Lord, in the last couple of days. And pray you completely heal her. Pray for my friend Gwendolyn and his wife, Ruth, and her issues. And Lord, uh, be with us tonight as we read the word of God. Lord, help us to be a blessing and encouragement to others. And we thank you for it. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and go to the music, see what Miss Jasmine has for us. Oh, 
I believe I asked for another Bible. You did? Yeah, I did. Over on the kitchen table. Good evening, everybody. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, trying to get my bangs to do its thing. Okay. But anyway. I love to tell the story of haunting things above of Jesus and his glory of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story because I know it is true it satisfies my longings as nothing else can do I love to tell
You know, I was going to go to the book of Lamentations. I have never got back to 2 Timothy yet. But I was going to go to the book of Lamentations, simple five chapters. It's called the Lamentations of Jeremiah. When he was lamenting the fact of the captivity of Jerusalem being besieged and taken by the Chaldeans. And uh, starting out in the book of Jeremiah, he was giving them the word of God, trying to warn them. Told them that if they just uh, would take heed and they could stay in their own land, eat their own food, stay in their own houses, even though they were going into captivity. But they refused to listen. And so they were taken out. Jerusalem was pretty much destroyed, the temple and all. And that's where Nehemiah comes in and he's a uh, sad accountant when he asked of the estate of of the uh, city. And uh, in Lamentations, the Lamentations of Jeremiah, he's lamenting the fact of all that has come upon Jerusalem, the beloved city. And uh, as you know, Daniel was also one of the captives down there. We went through the book of Daniel. And Ezekiel, he also was uh, one of the captives. He was a priest. And uh, so I want to, I decided I'm going to start reading in the book of Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel is a very hard book for me. I have never begun in chapter one and read all the way through. Uh, it, it boggles the mind, but uh, some things I don't understand, I can't explain. But uh, anyway, we're going to start reading there and see where we go with it. Uh, we've got... 48 chapters in the book of Ezekiel. I'm going to read to you what Dr. J. Vernon McGee says about Ezekiel himself. So I don't feel like a complete idiot, but I'm using a man that has corrected the Bible quite a few times to uh, justify my ignorance. Amen. So the theme is the display of the Lord's glory. Ezekiel's vision of the glory of the Lord may very well be a, be a key to all the visions in the entire word of God. It certainly is the key to the rest of the book of Ezekiel. Many people think of the book of the, of the Revelation as resting upon the prophecy of Daniel and the Olivet Discourse of our Lord. That is true, but I believe it rests primarily upon the apocalypse of Ezekiel. You will find a striking similarity between the vision in Ezekiel 1 and chapters 4 and 5 of the book of Revelation. This vision is a very difficult one to deal with. One preacher said, if anyone asks whether the vision is lucid, I confess its obscurity and that I can scarcely understand it. I am certainly of the same thought in the sense that I must concur with his statement. Neither do I understand Ezekiel's vision clearly. However, there is one thing that I am confident that this vision is not. It is not a vision of the present mechanical age. Ezekiel's vision of the wheels within wheels is not a prophecy of the airplane. When the old propeller planes were first developed, several prophetic teachers were saying that this vision was a prophecy of the airplane. Today we have jet planes and they have no wheels within wheels. And uh, we must set aside that interpretation. Well, in the turbine stages there is, but I guess he didn't know that. Such interpretations are juvenile. <clears throat> Silly and senile chatter like that is what has brought prophecy into disrepute. What we do have in the first chapter of Ezekiel I believe is a vision of the glory of the Lord in the book of Isaiah or the glory of the Lord. I'm sorry. In the book of Isaiah, we have the principles of the throne of God. In Jeremiah, we have the practice of that throne. But in Ezekiel, we have the person who is on the throne. I want to hasten to add that we do not have God himself exposed in this vision. 
You do not have a window display of him. When I began my ministry, I considered this to be a vision of God, but it is not that. It is instead a vision of the glory of God, a vision of the presence of God. We see here a vision of the chariot of God as he rides triumphantly and irresistibly through time. There is one feature of this vision which shocked me when I discovered it. The chariot is vacant. I had taken for granted that God was there. There are four living creatures, the cherubim connected with the chariot, yet they are distinct from it. Above all, there is a throne, and on the throne there is a man. This is the highest vision of God that we are given, and it is most difficult to understand. We will note just a few of its impressive aspects. Let's read a few verses, and then we'll go back to see what he says about those. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month of the fifth day, as I was among the captives by the river of Kibar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. Now he says in the 30th year, in the fourth month, that'd be July on the Jewish calendar. And I was among the captives by the river Kibar, that the heavens were open, I knew, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked. And behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the mist thereof as the color of amber out of the mist of the fire. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a, a fire. Uh, Brother Tommy and I were working on a uh, fire blower for a construction company in uh, we rebuilt the engine or built an engine and put in there. And this was a giant blower. They pulled it behind the truck and they took it up to the job site where they were clearing land for building houses. And that engine would run this big fan, cause it to blow a lot of air. And they dig a pit and they put all these trees in there. I'm talking about an acre at a time. And they'd put them in there and set them on fire. And then we'd turn that, that fan on. And I'm telling you, that thing would just blaze up and you'd just see the, the flames enfolding each other. And sat there and watched and make you think how horrible hell must be. But anyway, to get back to this, he says this about verse 1 through 4. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, which seemed to indicate that Ezekiel was 30 years of age. However, it is the belief of many scholars that this is geared to a little different calendar. I will not go into any detail on this, as frankly, it gets a little intricate, and I do not feel that it is essential. I saw visions of God. Well, evidently, God thought it was uh, essential because he put it in his book. Amen. I saw visions of God. While the captives in Babylon had sat down and wept by the rivers of Babylon, Psalm 137, verse 1, it says, how can we sing the songs of Zion and, you know, is there a strange land? But Ezekiel was seeing visions of God. What a contrast, seeing visions and weeping. We have not quite come to the time of destruction of Jerusalem, which took place during the reign of Zedekiah. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest. Ezekiel belonged to the tribe of Levi, apparently the priestly branch, and probably to the sons of Kohath. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are told that he was the son of Buzi. Kibar was the main canal that came off the Euphrates River, which watered that area. Evidently, the Jewish captives were put there to till the land. This area was removed by quite a few miles from Babylon. That may be the reason that Daniel and Ezekiel did not have the opportunity to meet together for a meal 
Daniel may have visited the area, but I doubt that Ezekiel would have been permitted to visit Daniel. Behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. I know that many people have made a great deal of this idea that there is a great vacant space up yonder in the north. That is the direction that leads to the presence of God. Our modern radio electronic telescopes with their big dishes have shown that there are stars out there. It is not vacant. However, the north is used in scripture to point to the throne of God in Isaiah 14, 13. We read, speaking of the fall of Satan, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I believe the idea is that instead of pointing to the North Pole, we are to look up. God's throne is out yonder, not relative to any direction at all. After all, its location is not something you and I can understand. We are told, look up for your redemption draw nigh in Luke 21, 28. That is the direction in which our attention should be focused today. Also in Psalm 75, verses 5 through 7, we read, Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one, setteth up another. The only direction that is not mentioned is north. And I would say the thought is that is up. God's throne is out yonder, even beyond space. And I definitely believe that. I believe it's above a body of water called the Great Deep, which the face of it is frozen now. The world went out of the north and indicates a tremendous movement from the throne of God. It is the judgment from God. And a fire enfolding itself, and the brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire, this is the first thing we observe, a light flashing forth, revealing and also concealing, obscuring and yet bringing out where it can be seen. It is a light brighter than the sun. Perhaps it should be compared to the inside of an atomic blast. It was incandescent like lightning. The word of God says that our God is a consuming fire in Hebrews 12, 29, and that God is light, 1 John 1, 5. Paul said that the time of his conversion, he saw a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, Acts 26, 13. All of this speaks of the unapproachable presence of God. See also verses 13 and 14. In verse 5, he says, this verse and also verse 26, the appearance of a man, speak of the incarnation of Christ, the fact that God became a man and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, 14, Isaiah 52, 7 tells us how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of the good that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. God came to earth, a man walked the dusty trails of Palestine, and finally spikes were driven into his feet. I'm going to leave off with what he says there, and we'll go back to reading in the book of Ezekiel. In verse 5 here, it says, And out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. This was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man and everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. They had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. I mean, if they're facing four different directions and they want to go, they didn't have to turn. They just went this way or they went that way or that way or that way. Amen. And it says, verse 10, as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man the face of a lion on the right side, and they had they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. I want to look back here just a moment to see what he says about verse 10 there. 
and uh, let's see what he says. He said, these four faces, compare this with Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Remind us of the four gospels in which Christ is revealed in four aspects. His kingship, that's as the line, that's in Matthew. Symbolized here by the line. His servanthood, Mark, symbolized by the ox. His perfect humanity in Luke, symbolized by the face of the man. And his deity in John, symbolized by the flying eagle. These four living creatures resemble the description we have of the cherubim who were in the Garden of Eden to guard the way of the tree of life. They were not shutting man out from God. They were keeping the way open. What did Adam and Eve see when they looked back as they left the garden? They saw a slain animal whose skins they were wearing. And they saw the cherubim overshadowing, keeping open the way to God. It is the blood that makes an atonement for the sin of man. When Moses made the mercy seat, there were, there were cherubim above which looked down upon the blood of the sacrifices. The same thing Adam and Eve had seen. Through the blood is the only way man can approach God. The Lord Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, John 14, 6. And we go back to verse 11 here. I'm sorry, verse 15. No, I did, I jumped, I'm sorry. Verse 13, and as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces, the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. And they four had one likeness and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. And their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was as the color of the terrible crystals stretched forth over their heads above and under the firmament were their wings straight the one toward the the other everyone had two which covered on this side and everyone had two which covered on that side their bodies and when they went i heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters as the voice of the almighty the voice of speech as the noise of an host and when they stood, they let down their wings. There was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about within it. From the appearance of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance 
of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spake. We'll stop there tonight. Amen. And we'll pick up on chapter two, Lord willing, tomorrow evening. Amen. Hello, Cindy. How is the children? Or how are the children? Is Dylan all right? Or is he still in uh, critical condition? Or is he coming through? And how is the bleeding on Derek's stomach? I'm glad you're on. And uh, I won't get over there tonight. But Lord willing, we'll get back over there to see him tomorrow. Everybody else, y'all have a good evening. Amen. And let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Great Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to be here tonight. Again, we pray for Derek and Dylan and Kim and Cindy. And Lord, we ask you to, to touch each and every one of them. Lord, heal them up. And Lord, I pray you get these boys out of ICU and and uh, they find out where the blood was going with with uh, Derek. And Lord, you know we love that little fella. Lord, he's uh, he's different and he's special and we miss him coming. But we pray that you get him up and healthy and back in church. And Lord, watch over the whole family. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off here. Cindy, if you want.